Hello and welcome to another Moog demo library. In today's video, we're going to be exploring Muse, and in particular, we're going to focus on the filter section of Muse. The filter section contains two independent filters, and they are both 24 dB Moog ladder filters, so the classic Moog topology based on the 904A filters found in the 5U modular systems. The two filters are identical other than the fact that filter 1 is state variable and has a high pass button. Otherwise, they both have cutoff controls, resonant controls, the ability to select 50% or 100% tracking of the keyboard independently on each filter. And if you do want a different amount of tracking, that can be accomplished via the mod map. And then there are two envelope amount attenuverters that allow us to apply positive or negative modulation from the filter envelope to the cutoff of either filter. Additionally, we have an order switch that allows us to configure how the filters interact with each other. And we have a link filters button, which allows us to link the cutoff sweeps of both filters. So to begin, I'm going to start with order set to serial and the high pass mode engaged on filter one. This is the default behavior that you will get when initializing a patch. And let's listen to how it sounds as I sweep the filters while holding a note down. Currently, I just have oscillator one on, and it's set to a square wave with a little bit of PWM coming from the modulation oscillator. So let's hear how it sounds. Let me also increase resonance so that we can make the sweeps a little bit more dramatic. So as you can hear, it has that classic Moog filter sound. And when we have the order switch set to serial, what this means is that filter 1's output is routed through filter 2. So any of the things coming out of filter 1 get filtered afterwards by filter 2. And what this allows us to do is actually create a bandpass response using both filters while we link them by hitting the link filters button. When I hit this link filters button, what happens is that the cutoff control for filter 2 will control both cutoff knobs, and the cutoff control for filter 1 will act as a spacing to create a differential in cutoff settings between filter 1 and filter 2. So you can offset the two filter positions despite them sweeping at the same time. Now in the case of filter 1 being set to high pass while filter 2 is set to low pass, in serial mode we can get a band pass filter, and let's hear how that sounds. So you can notice that as I open up the low pass filter, the high pass filter is simultaneously removing low end. And when I close the high pass filter to let low end back in, the low pass filter is removing the upper harmonics, giving us a band pass response. But one nice thing that we can do is with the spacing control, we can determine how the two uh, are sharing their relationship. So I can set spacing a little bit lower so that I'm not removing quite as much of my low end at the top of the sweep. So this can be a nice way to dial in the bandpass response that we want. Another thing that we can do is set the two filters to operate in parallel. This means that instead of filter one running through filter two, the two of their outputs are mixed together and then fed into the VCA. And what this allows us to do while filter one is in high pass mode is create something like a notch filter that sounds like a phaser. So let's hear how that sounds. And if I want to, what I can do is adjust spacing to kind of make that notch width more dramatic. So as you can hear, we can get this really nice notch response that gives us a different flavor than the serial mode where we have a band pass. Now the third mode that we can use is the stereo mode. And what this does is take filter one and hard pan it to the left, and filter two gets hard pan to the right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the high pass mode off because I just want to use this as a stereo low pass filter at the moment. I'm going to set the spacing close to noon, but I'm actually going to offset it a little bit upwards on filter one. 
I'm gonna keep my resonance settings and let's hear how it sounds as I sweep. Let me set a wider spacing. And so what you can hear is that when we sweep both filters at the same time, we can create this interesting stereo motion where one filter is more accentuated on one side versus the other, and it makes the sweep feel like it's happening in stereo, which is a really unique effect. Now beyond this, one thing that we can do to affect the character of the filter is use the overload control in the mixer to determine how hard the oscillator hits the two filters, and this will change the character of the filter. So let's hear how it sounds as we overload. We can hear a little bit more drive and clipping occurring. This can also be interesting if we start incorporating some of the envelope modulation because we can make the two filters behave differently where maybe filter two gets opened by its envelope while filter one gets closed by its envelope. So let's hear how that can sound. So as you can hear, that results in some very interesting stereo movement. The filter section of Muse offers a lot of very powerful tonal sculpting capabilities when designing sounds in Muse.